Hello and welcome to another tool review. Today we're going to be looking at Schwaben's Cooling System Evacuation Tool, also commonly referred to as a Coolant Refill and Air Purge Tool. This tool aids in the process of refilling your engine's cooling system after a servicing when it's empty and to bleed out the air that is otherwise difficult to remove. Bleeding out as much air as possible is really important because trapped air can cause issues in both the heating and cooling regards of your engine, like how the heater core is so far away and relatively high up in the system that's a common spot for air to get trapped, and that's when you might experience a lack of heat blowing out of your vents after a servicing. Otherwise, bubbles throughout the system just make it harder for the coolant to flow and inhibits the engine cooling performance. When you purchase this kit, what you get inside of this plastic blow mold case is six adapters. They have different profiles and sizes of outer diameter so that they can fit onto a bunch of different vehicle brands but all of them will seat in place of either the radiator tank cap or the expansion tank cap. And then you have the Venturi adapter, then one quarter inch industrial or M style plug for your air compressor system. And then of course you have the gauged valve assembly. At first blush, the parts look and feel like very typical Schwaben to me. And that would be generally good quality, but there's always the odd part that isn't amazing. I think this quick couple is a good example of that, how it's got this kind of cheap chrome looking paint over not amazing quality metal. And even if it's a nitpicky point, the valve handles in green are a kind of ugly molded piece. That being said, it's always very hard to complain because the price value that you get with Schwaben is quite high, especially when you compare it against the same tool from other leading brands. The physics that creates the Venturi vacuum effect, which truly makes this tool useful, happens in the adapter. Air from your compressor will be traveling in through this valve and straight through the adapter. There's a restriction inside of the adapter that'll force the air coming in through a tight tube, which will actually speed up the air and subsequently creates a vacuum. This vacuum is what creates suction in the hoses perpendicular to the adapter and is ultimately what draws air out of your cooling system. With that vacuum built in the car and trapped there, you'll use it to your advantage because then you'll suck the coolant and water mixture back into the car. So the largest benefit to this is that Every area of the system will be filled with liquid because of the vacuum and there won't be an opportunity for air to get in at all, provided you don't accidentally introduce air while you're under vacuum, like if your coolant was running low and you didn't notice and then your hose started sucking up air along with it. I'll start by assembling the plug into the Venturi adapter and then I'll choose the correct adapter for my expansion tank and then I'll walk you through the vacuum and refill process. It turns out that even with six adapters, the only one that'll even sit in here is the 35 millimeter one. The next size up, the 40 mil, it can fit if you shove it in there, but I've already test fit the gauge assembly down into it. And when you start trying to actually seat it, it doesn't work. So this one, once it's tightened down, I do believe it'll hold vacuum okay, but I measured the inside diameter of the expansion tank hole here and a 37 or 38 millimeter would have been perfect. Before I mount the gauge assembly into the expansion tank, I'm going to go into the car and turn the ignition just to auxiliary. That'll allow me to turn on the cabin fan again, so I'll put the heat on high and the fan speed low, and that should open up the heater core circuit and allow me to pull a vacuum on the entire system. This also means that the key needs to be in that position for this entire process. Now I'll take the gauge and put it down into the tank. All you have to do is turn the tightening knob clockwise until it's firmly seated and I'm going to get a good angle on the gauge so I can read it properly while it's pulling vacuum and I can attach my other hoses. I'll leave both of the valves closed for now. Next, I'll attach the Venturi adapter with this quick connect, and I'll make sure that this valve is closed. I've got the discharge hose from the Venturi adapter attached to another hose, and it's leading to a drain pan. I've also got my refill mixture of coolant and distilled water at the ready for when we're finished building the vacuum. I'm going to attach my air source now. I have my compressor set to 90 psi. The Schwaben manual doesn't specifically say what PSI to run through the Venturi adapter, but it does say that your compressor needs to have the ability to run 90 PSI, so I'm reading between the lines and taking that as instruction. We're ready to start. First I'll open the Venturi valve followed by the intermediary valve. That'll allow vacuum to begin building and we'll see the needle starting to move on the gauge. 
It'll take less than a minute, I think, for the vacuum to stabilize at a maximum negative pressure. And even at that point, I'll continue drying vacuum for another 30 seconds to make sure that all the air is out. When the needle is stopped for certain in that location, I will close these two valves again. By the way, this gauge reads in inches of mercury vacuum. That's the INHG. On a typical passenger vehicle, the maximum negative pressure you can achieve is somewhere in the negative 15 to negative 27 range. So don't be concerned if you can't hit minus 30. That's probably not going to happen. This is the fun part, and I'm going to do it with you live, even though it's going to take a little while and be loud once the compressor kicks in but I think it's gonna be kinda of cool. So, here we go. All right, the needle's starting to move. This is starting to flatten out. Still building towards negative 22. A little bit past 22. This may be our stabilization point. Yeah, about 22 and a half. So we'll count half a minute right now. With the vacuum trapped now at just under minus 23, I'm gonna wait two minutes now to see if the needle drops and therefore I might be losing pressure. If that happens, you need to stop and figure out where your leak is and then start again. My vacuum is holding steady, so I can proceed now. I've already disconnected my air source and next I'll take the filler hose and put it into my container of pre-mixed coolant. I have nine liters already mixed in here and that's way more than the system capacity, and that will allow me to not have to stop, and I don't have to worry about getting air accidentally in the line if I run out when I'm not watching. If you want to learn more about mixing coolant, or how I even got to this process in the first place working on the cooling system, check out my full form cooling video right here. I'll open the fill valve now, which should allow the vacuum in the car to start sucking the coolant out of the jug, through the line, and in. Schwaben says once the gauge reaches zero, it should be filled. At that point, I'll close the valve again. I noticed that the suction hose is a little bit buoyant in the coolant, so I'm gonna keep it close and keep my hand on there to force the hose to the bottom while I operate the valve.
what just happened was that before the gauge got to zero, it never did actually, the expansion tank was rising all the way up to what I assume is the very bottom of the adapter inside of the tank. That's sort of like the top level equilibrium. And I stopped it. It wasn't taking on any more liquid and I believe we are done. I'm going to open the intermediary valve now to release any excess pressure in the system right here. Now we're down to zero. If you still hear your fan running, that's a good reminder to go in and take the key out of the ignition now. I've removed the air purge tool and replaced it with the expansion tank cap, and now we can start the car. I'll be having the fan running on the highest heat setting again and the fan speed on low, and I'll be waiting for both the thermostat to open and for the car to reach operating temperature. I'll be watching the level of the expansion tank during this time closely to see if it drops from any voids in the system left where the vacuum didn't fill it, although there shouldn't be any. Once this process is done, and hopefully the system is verified to be fully bled, I'll just remove any excess coolant from the expansion tank. The first startup went really well. It took a while at idle, maybe 15 minutes or so, for the thermostat to open up, as told by the warm upper radiator pipe, and the level in the expansion tank went down ever so slightly. That's a good thing, that means that the air purge tool did its job and filled up all the areas, and I will need to remove just a little bit of coolant out of here, but that's no problem. On the first go, the heater blew really nice and hot, and all I had to do at one point was open up the bleed screw on here, and just a little air bubble came out, but I think the system is actually quite well bled. With the car nice and cool, I've evened out the coolant level now that there's no pressurization in the expansion tank. I also just rinsed out the coolant intake and gauge assembly piece with some warm water, which is what Schwaben recommended. Now that the job's done, I can say, I really like this tool. Most importantly, it does work, but I think the real value of it is measured in time. Time that you're not spending slowly filling up the expansion tank, hoping that all the pockets fill up and you don't get an air bubble somewhere, causing you to do multiple bleedings in the future. I think although that this tool is a nice to have, it's definitely worth picking one up. Thank you so much for watching this review, and I hope it helped you during your shopping research or just helped you understand the tool a little bit better. Please do subscribe if you liked this and you want to see more in the future. See you next time.